Thank you so much for joining us today for the Pastor's Potluck Podcast. Here on the Pastor's Potluck, it's similar to a normal potluck where you might get something that you want and there may be something that you just want to pass up altogether. And that's okay. There's something here for everybody. Our goal here is to encourage you and maybe in the process entertain you. If you're ready, let's dig in. Welcome to another episode of the Pastor's Potluck. You just mentioned something to me that I don't know that I think we may have talked about this, but I think I need more clarification on. Mm -hmm. What in the world is a bean dinner? Well, we used to go to this event every year. It was for an organization in Charleston called RCCR. Um, They helped people with um, housing issues and and things like that. Um, But they have an annual fundraiser every November. It's a bean dinner where it's like pinto beans yeah. and cornbread, and they would make the most delicious mac and cheese you've ever had in your life. And I think that they would normally have collard greens, which, as you can guess, I, I passed <laughs> on that. Um, normally as like soon as he said, ka, I was like, oh, no, yeah, he don't like that. Um, but the food was always amazing. I'm, I don't even really like beans, but yeah. I always liked going. They'd have like a silent auction and things, but I, it's like a fundraiser here. You know, like people actually you, sounds like a pretty good meal. Do you eat pinto beans? I love bread? them. Yeah. Is that like a Texas thing? Well, so pinto beans are like the precursor for like refried beans, and if you've ever had like barracho beans, oh, it's sorry. This, huh? What'd you say? Refried beans. But you said barracho beans. Yeah, barracho <laughs> beans. It's like the it, it's like they're stewed, but it has like the Mexican no. seasoning in it. Typically comes in a cup. I don't like beans. Other than green ones. That's just the weirdest thing I just heard. Yeah. But I will go to the bean <laughs> dinner, and for some reason there, I will eat like half a bowl of the beans. Yeah. They're good. They do them upright. But, like, I know people, like, they just go to, like, Tudors around here and will eat pinto beans and cornbread for lunch. Like, I'm not doing that. Never in a million years. Tudors sells pinto beans and cornbread? Yeah. Hmm. Erica makes, like, a big crock pot. And so she puts, like, ground meat in it. She puts, like, onions and garlic and bacon in it, and it just stews all day. And yeah. Mexican seasoning in it, not like taco meat or McCormick's yeah. taco. Still not doing that. It, why? You I haven't even like, had it. I don't like beans. You like this other ones? Yeah, but I don't know. Maybe it's because it's for a good cause. This is for a good cause. If I get Erica to make you some, that's going to be for a bad cause? I mean... You gonna feel guilty and not eat it? I mean, I'll try it. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm. We'll make some. Oh, I'll bring it, and you'll like it. You'll, okay. you'll. I'm telling you, you'll go. Okay, I can get down with these beans. You guys always trying to make me do stuff that I don't want to do. No, I'm not <laughs> trying to make you do anything that you don't want to do. I already know you're not gonna do it. I just like to talk about it because it makes yeah, me laugh. I ain't eating them beans. <laughs> You are going to eat them. Uh, Apologize to your wife now. I ain't eating them beans. (laughs) (laughs) It's so bad. I know. Well, I hate beans. I just like refried beans when I go to a Mexican restaurant. Oh, man, I hate that so much. What is it about beans that you don't like? The texture. Oh, so it is the texture. That that one is the texture and the taste. So pretty much everything about them. Yeah. What I like about the ones that Erica makes is because she cooks it with ground beef and bacon. Yeah, I mean, like all this stuff. And so, like, it's not like just straight beans. Like, there's other things in there. Yeah, like I like when they put like ham or something in, like the ones at the bean dinner. Yeah. Always good. There's been a long talk about beans. Uh, look, sometimes that's just what you have to get, yeah. you know, take care of in life is yeah. have a good conversation about beans. And look, I mean, we're getting older. I mean, the older that we get, our the way that we open up our potlucks are going to be like, man, let's talk about the weather. Yeah. I mean, that's just what old people do. They just get around and talk about the weather and legumes and legumes. That's how, you're absolutely right. See? <laughs> well, we're continuing our conversation on Moses. And um, actually, I think that I'll, I've always been intrigued by this story because you hear it taught um, in, you know, kids' church. And uh, and it's always like, oh, you know, like 
you just hear it taught a lot, especially growing up. I don't want to try to speak for kids pastors that tried to teach me this growing up. But anyways, mm -hmm. um, but we're starting off and it's in Numbers 13. And uh, I just wanted to like quickly kind of like unpack or just kind of like br like give like a quick a quick overview and then let you unpack some of the stuff if that's yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, so the Lord speaks to Moses and tells um, him, hey, like you're right on the edge of this promised land. And this is the land of Canaan. Um, I want you to send 12 individuals, mm -hmm. which turns out to be the, the 12 people that were sent were the 12 leaders of the tribes mm -hmm. of Israel. And so uh, to scout out this land and just kind of see what's happening, what's going on there. Um, they are in the land for 40 days. They brought back samples of all the things, like the fruit and everything else that was growing there. They saw giants, and then they make their way back. Is there anything in that that we need to, like, look at and unpack or before we <laughs> move forward? Like to, ver to chapter 14? Well, it's just like from what I just said. Like, so, because yeah. I think you've mentioned it a little bit about, like, some of the fruit and stuff that were growing there. Yeah, like, if you go <coughs> and look at that story, it's really neat. The, the spies that go into the land, and, like, they see these gigantic clusters of grapes. Yeah. And, like, people always, like, freak out about, like, oh, man, the Bible, you know, is telling stories, you know. Like, there ain't no way that this great cluster of grapes was so big that, like, you couldn't carry. No, it there, first off, there is. You can Google like over in the middle, mid Middle East to this day. They still make these. They still have these gigantic clusters of grapes. And it wasn't that they were so big that someone couldn't carry them. It was how would you carry them yeah. without smashing them if you didn't put them on a pole mm -hmm. and be carried by two people? That's why it says that they were carried by two people on a pole. Not net, not just because of the size, but because of the practicality that. You can't carry a big cluster of grapes with your arms wrapped around it as far as they needed to travel yeah. without smashing them. Yeah. Right? So, like, they get these big cluster of grapes. They see all these other just magnificent fruits. The whole picture is the promised land, the place that God had for Israel to go and to live and to be with him was um, beyond anything that they had experienced. It was... Um, it, it, you know, the way that they talk about it in the scriptures is it's a land flowing with milk and honey. Yeah. But that's all figurative to say, like, this is a blessed place. Yeah. This is a place of plenty, a place where you'll, your needs will be met. Like, this is what it looks like to live in the blessing of God. Yeah. Um, essentially. And so that's what this fruit is representative of. Um, and and it, it, in a sense, it's literal, but, like, it's also meant to show, like, you know, this is what happens when people... Um, devote their life to God and live in his presence Yeah, as well. Yeah, there was so much bad that was going on. And if you, yeah. it's it's like God proved to them so many times, like, like I'm here, I'm with you. I'm like, we're still doing this. Like, yeah. this is still a good partnership. And he's finally led them to the edge of this. Uh, yeah, because we fast forwarded. Like, last time that we talked, we were still back in Exodus. We just fast forwarded through, like, Leviticus is all laws, yeah. Very little to no narrative. The first part of Numbers, same same thing, as well as some like some stories that we were already familiar with, yeah. And so this is like now we have fast forwarded. They've left Mount Sinai, and are now right on the edge of the Promised Land. They can literally see what it was that God was leading them to, yeah. And this is like the saddest part um, of the story for me is like because again this. This Israel's history mimics so many of our lives from time to time. Yeah. How God, like, took them from slavery right to the edge of the promised land. And now we're getting ready to see how the enemy fakes them out of living the life that God had intended for them to live. Yeah. And this, this happens so often. Like, especially in our lives, we don't always know when we're right on the edge of the promised land. So we need yeah. to live like we always are. Um, because... Like, we let our enemy fake us out, and then we end up going and spending our lives in the wilderness. I, I can't tell you how many people are probably experiencing that right now. Yeah. Um, well, and it's not just, like, you individually um, experiencing this. It's, like, like your generations that come after it. 
because of the disobedience that maybe God, like we yeah. see that with the Israelites, like because of this, like, like my grandchildren are going to be able to enter into the promised land, but are my kids because like some of them were on the cusp of this age limit that God had cut off. So basically what happened is it's so not to jump too far ahead, just to kind of fill in some gaps for everybody. So the 12 spies come back and they're talking with Moses and Aaron about all of the things that have, that have happened that they've seen in the last 40 days of them kind of scouting out the land. They have this big ginormous cl- cluster of grapes where it takes two people um, to carry this thing wh- whenever it's tied to a pole. They've got all different types of fruits and vegetables and everything that they're carrying with them. Um, and then they also talk about the people that are there too. And so there were uh, giants and the and there was actually an interaction with one of them where they said that we even look like grasshoppers to them. Yeah, that was the report. of When the spies came back, Ten out of the twelve gave this report to the people that yeah. was like doom and gloom. Like the people over there are huge. Yeah, they're going to destroy us. We can't do this. This is just like the sound of so many people that like don't go after God's best in their life because of self doubt. Mm-hmm. When it's like, look, <clears throat> if the Lord has already given it to you and led you to it, then it doesn't matter what what's there. Yeah, right. Um, because and and this is also like sometimes people think, oh, well, whenever I am faithful to God, then all the fights of life go away. That's not necessarily the case. Like, yeah. what the spies brought back was like, listen, there's fruit. There's like unbelievable blessing in that place God has for us, but there's an enemy there too, and so there's going to be fights as well. So there's fruit and fights for us in the promised land. So even when you're right in the middle of where God wants you to be, you're going to experience blessing and battle simultaneously because yep. this is just like, this is called life. That's what it is and so 10 of them were like no we don't want to go we're going to get crushed and, and it's so sad because you go like don't you realize who's on your side yeah right so like like how many people like god's called you to go and start a church or to start a business or to start a blog or to you know uh do foster care or wh- whatever it is that god's calling you to and people go like oh i don't i don't know i don't it's like look if god called you to do it he's going to provide everything you need to do it and that's like God had already promised Israel he was taking them to the promised land. Yeah. And these guys got faked out by the enemy and went, no, I don't think we can do it. And it's like if it was just up to them, no, they couldn't do it, but they're discounting the fact that it's God. Like God's on their side. He's going to be the one that does not And then there's only two spies, um, Joshua, Joshua and Caleb, yeah. that are like, no, we can do this. It's fine. We can do it. But like the – yeah, the other ten, uh, like you said, they, they even make the comment, we felt like we were grasshoppers next to these folks. And it's like, yeah, you felt like it. That doesn't even mean that it's true. Yeah. Right? Like our, our feelings lie to us all the time yep. Like about stuff. And so they just felt inferior, so therefore they acted inferior. Yeah. And that's sad whenever you've got God literally willing to fight for you and you act inferior um, in that situation so joshua and caleb though are going no we can take this land we have to take this land yeah that's why they're the only two that didn't end up getting punished the way that the rest of israel ends up getting punished yeah it's really crazy like because after like all of this is happening um like it seems like it's almost immediately in the scripture the way that it says this um but it's like it says the presence of god comes like immediately in their like in their midst and is like, and Moses starts this, like this petition with God. Hey, please, please don't kill, you know, don't kill us all. And, and like, I like, we know that you've got something going on. And so God actually listens to the prayer of Moses and, uh, spares their life. But the other 10 leaders besides Joshua and Caleb, like they're immediately struck dead. Because they went like against like what what God had told Moses and what Moses had asked them yeah. to do, um, and it's it's like like the price for disobedience. A lot of times we just think, uh, you know, it's just I don't want to be in an uncomfortable uncomfortable situation, but it could be so stinking detrimental. It always leads to death, right? That's what the story is showing. Yeah. It, now that means a lot different stuff to us than it does in this story. For yeah. these 10, 
God dealt with Israel in a different way at this point in human history than he deals with us now. Um, because of the cross of Christ, things on the other side of it are different. But at this moment, it literally led to death. But like in our situations, how many times are we disobedient or don't trust God enough and it leads to death, right? It leads to the death of our relationships. It leads to the death of our dreams. It leads to the death of finances. Our finances. Like when we like, yeah. oh, sorry, God, we're just going to do our own thing. We're not going to listen to you. It's like it always leads to death. Yeah. Uh, not necessarily physical death. And I'm certain that that's a possibility for some people. But, like, like normally it's like, no, there's a death of a relationship. Yeah. Right? Like, you decided to be disobedient to God, and now your marriage is a disaster. You decided to be disobedient to God, and now your kids are wayward. You just, uh, So there's, like, it's death. Like yeah. One, one way or another. And this is what God was always talking about. Like, all the way back to the beginning. Yes, he meant if you eat the fruit of the tree, you will surely die. Yes, in a physical sense, but also that sin always just brings about death. It's always just killing stuff wherever it's at. It's, I mean, it's killing your hopes and your dreams and your future and your prospects. It's killing everything that it touches, which yeah. is why, like, sin is um, tied to death because it's the antithesis of what God stands for, which is life. God, everything about God brings life. That's the promised land was bringing life, but here they decided to be disobedient and had to experience death. And, yeah. and then the sad thing is, outside of Joshua and Caleb, every single one of them um, that was over a certain age were now going to miss out on God's best for their whole life. Yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, The punishment comes down and God says, listen, none of you all that are above what was at age 20 yep. are going to get into the promised land. You're going to go spend the next 40 years, a whole generation, walking around the wilderness with no pro- – like, listen – if they were to go into the promised land and have to fight their way through it, there's worse things than having to fight battles with God on your side. Yeah. The worst thing that you could do with your life is to go spend a whole generation just wandering around with no purpose. Mm-hmm. And that's what happened to these people. Yeah. That's what's happening to a lot of people. You've been robbed of your purpose because you decided not to be obedient to God. So you're just wandering around the wilderness of your life right now, aimless. Yeah. No true purpose, no nothing. It's just like just trying to get from, you know, day to day, job to job, paycheck to paycheck, just trying to make it, just wandering around in circles with no real purpose or passion in life, just trying to survive rather than going to God's promised land to actually thrive. And that's like, so I can't imagine the amount of people that literally at the end of their life, they look back and go, yeah, that was me. I decided to turn my back on God. I decided to not listen to God, and therefore I spent my whole life just wandering around and really accomplished nothing. Yeah. Never really got where God wanted me to go because I rejected what he had for me. I was too afraid to start that business, or I was too afraid to to start fostering those kids or to go out and get my education or to start that podcast or blog. I was too afraid, so therefore I just wandered around life. And life just kind of happened to me, and I missed out on God's best. Yeah, there's a there's an aspect of this story that that there are two of them. So one of the things that happens whenever these the the ten other of the tribe leaders are complaining and being frustrated, and uh, I can only imagine what was going through Joshua and Caleb's mind. Yeah, um, which was. Like we said, we could do this, and now like I'm being like because they haven't they hadn't heard from God that they were going to be allowed yeah. into. They had only heard that hey y'all are not going in. Mm-hmm. Um, but and then there's another thing that happens that I find like super intriguing. After the Israelites get this word that they're like, well, you're not going to be allowed into mm-hmm. the promised land. What happens is is they wake up the next morning. And some of them, they're just like, look, we're, <laughs> my bad, we're sorry. And so they start walking to the land of Canaan, yeah. Canaan, the promised land. And, like, the the people of the land come down yeah. and they just kill them and yeah, slaughter them, them like, immediately. Yeah, I was just reading this in my... Because I'm in numbers in my personal Bible study right now. Yeah. And I'm actually probably going to preach about this um, this fall in our For the Future series. Yeah. That God led them right to the edge of the promised land. 
They were too afraid to go where God was calling them to do. And the, the, the language that Moses writes in, in Numbers is really specific. He, he, um, he says, um, he sent them back towards the Red Sea. He literally sent them back where they came from. Yeah. Right? Like, so it's like, what's that picture of? Well, if you're not willing to go forward to where God wants you to go, you're going to go backwards yeah. in life. Like, you're not, like, this whole idea that we ever just stand still in life is just false. You're either going to go forward into God's blessing or you are going to go backwards back to where you came from. Yeah. But then right after that is the story where they're like, oh, 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 never mind. We changed our mind. We want to go. We want to go. Well, here's my bad. Yeah. You can't go without God's blessing. (laughs) Yeah. Right. So they try to go and they get utterly destroyed and driven back. Yeah. Because when God calls you to go do it, you go and do it. Then because that's when you go in his strength. Yeah. But like when you try to go in your strength. They are too much for you. It is too much for you. And you will fail. Yeah. And so that's why if you don't go in God's strength, and that's what happened right there. They were like, oh, we really messed this up. So I guess we'll go ahead and take care of this ourselves. Yeah, because yeah, we have kids. Yeah. And so, like, whenever we just, like, hey, I'm sorry, this is just what it is because of your action. Yeah, consequence. Because of this, you've got your consequence. And so you're like, we're going to tackle this the next day. And so you wake up the next day, and you're like, all right. It's time for your punishment. And they're like, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. You know, I didn't really mean those things oh, yeah. that I did or those words that I said. And, yep. go, <laughs> and so look, you're like, it's too late. look, I'm sorry. Like, yeah. this, this is not the program this that we're like, a part of. Uh, like, if, if, our, if our kids get a grounding that lasts longer than like a day, yeah. then it'll be like two, three, four weeks down the road of like, let's say they don't get their iPad or whatever. Yeah. They'll be like, but I haven't done anything for like weeks. It's like, yes, but listen. <laughs> You are going to live in the consequence. Yeah. No matter how long ago you made that decision, you still have this consequence. Because there is a drastic difference between forgiveness and consequences. Yeah. And this is something that the Lord has been showing me for the last couple of years in a lot of different stories. Um, I've got a, like one sermon in particular. I'll probably get to it next, early next year, hopefully. But, like, so what I'll tell my kids, like, listen. Today, me and you are fine. Yeah. We're good. It's all in the past. It does not release you from the consequences. Yeah. You're still going you're still gonna serve that grounding. Yeah. Oh, but I went and I, I, I went and tried to make it right. I, you know, like if one of them was mean to the other one. But I went and apologized. Great. And I love you that you did that. But you still have a consequence. Yeah. Because forgiveness never cancels out consequences. Yep. It just doesn't. That's not the way that the world is wired. This is why like in Galatians Galatians 6, uh, Paul writes about the principle of sowing and reaping. Yeah. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. That's the way that the world operates. You plant an apple tree, you're going to get an apple tree. You you plant good stuff, you get good stuff. Plant bad stuff, you're going to get bad stuff. Can I be forgiven for planting bad stuff? Yes. But will I still reap bad stuff? Absolutely. Yep. Right? You want to go and rack up a bunch of uh, credit card debt and then go, oh, Lord, please forgive me. That was so wrong of me. <laughs> He will forgive you in a moment, and that bill is still going to come due, right? You want to go out and drink yeah. and drive tonight, and then tomorrow, you know, maybe you get, maybe you kill somebody, maybe you you, you just get pulled over yep. or whatever. You go to jail tomorrow morning. You go, oh Lord, please forgive me. You're forgiven in an instance, and yet you still may serve time in jail. Yeah, you because still have the consequence for, exactly. Forgiveness does not get does not cancel out consequences. Mm-hmm. And if this is the way that like. Like, if you parent differently than that, you need to parent the way that God would parent. Listen, I I will forgive my kids in an instant for whatever they did if they're truly sorry for it. Yeah. But they're still going to have to face consequences. 100%. Because that's the way that the world works. Because that's the way that God wired the world to work. Yeah. Right? Like, Adam and Eve sin in the garden. God forgives them. <laughs> starts, the, you know, still in relationship with them. But, yeah, yeah, they've got some massive consequences that we're still living in to this day. Yeah. Forgiveness does not cancel out consequences. That's why the next day when they're like, oh, God, we was just joking about that whole not going in there thing. We're going to go ahead and do that today. He's like, no, sorry. You're already – your consequence started yesterday, and now you're going to go live. And I'm telling you, this this is one of those stories whenever I finally unpacked it, um, it it was like, man, I, I don't want that for my life. Well, I don't want to go wander around in my life and be on my deathbed and go like, man, 
I didn't do anything with what God gave me. I didn't accomplish anything because I was yeah. afraid. I didn't make a difference in anyone's life because I was selfish or scared or whatever it is. Like, I don't want to think about my life as just one big wilderness journey where I'm just like walking around, just trying to make it through, complaining about stuff and just like, I don't want that for my life. I don't want that for anyone else's life either, which is why we have to, like when God calls us to something, even if it's scary, even if it seems bigger than us, it has to be, we have to give him our yes. Yeah. Because if not, there's something worse than what you have to face, and that's just living a meaningless life yep. of just wandering around and then the reg- regret at the end of your life going, man, I didn't, I missed out because well, I said no. And, and th- well, and being disobedient as well, and then you get handed this consequence, and then you not being okay with the consequence yeah. – and then you thinking that you're going to go do it, then the other consequence that comes is entirely yeah. like the absolute worst outcome that you can deal with. And it's just like, look, you got to own up to your mistake. Yeah. If you weren't obedient to what God has asked you, and just you've got to be okay with whatever God yeah. has asked you or is is putting you through. Yeah. Um, but there, it, there's – You know what I'm like, saying? It's like, you yeah. know, like here's your punishment – and then you going, that's not the punishment I wanted. Yeah. Like I want to, I want to go ahead and do that. You know, my kid. So if one of my kids gets their iPad taken away, and then I always put it up in the same spot. Mm-hmm. If I find out that they've grabbed it and they played with it whenever they're supposed to be grounded from it, mm-hmm. the punishment for that is drastically longer and harsher yeah. than it was because you weren't okay with the first time that I just said, "Hey, this is this is the program. You, sorry, you yeah. just got to deal with it." It's drastically harder and so like not being okay with just like i mean nobody's going to be okay with consequences but you have to understand that like what you dealt or dealing with is because this is what you have reaped just like you said just what i've sowed like this is what i put in the ground like disobedience is going to bring about some negative situations in my life yeah yeah i mean there, there there is i mean just think of the consequence of regret we're going, wow, I wasted, like, what God gave me, I have now wasted because I didn't have the guts to, to do it. Yeah. To face all the battles and all the trials and all the tribulations that will come with it, I didn't have the guts to do it, so therefore I missed out. Yeah. Like, that to me sounds like a much worse punishment than, than just about anything I could face in life because I'd go like, man, I, I think, especially, like, the, the younger generation right now is really – um keyed in on this which i think it's a great thing like they want their lives to matter yeah right this is why everyone wants to be a youtuber or an influencer or they're they're very big on social justice and stuff they want their lives to matter yeah everyone wants their lives to matter right so the way that you make sure you do that is you marry your life to what god has in store for you yeah and that's that's where you will get the most out of life but if when we choose to do things our own way and reject what God has for us, that that's the recipe to a meaningless, you know, like kind of hopeless existence where if life just feels like a drag constantly, it's because you're not living in the blessing of God. Yeah. Right? Like I, I, I talked about it last Sunday um, in our series. Like if you don't feel blessed in every area of, your, of life, because it, it's probably because you're not asking God into those areas of your life, so, like, you're not asking him to come in, but then you're complaining that it's not how you wish that it was. Yeah. Yeah, well, he has to be invited into those areas to bless those areas, um, right? And so, like, if your finances is your big battle right now, if you're not inviting God into your finances, um, then you can't complain that your finances are not blessed. Yeah. Because you're not living in a way, like, you have to live in the flow of that blessing by being, like, connecting – your finances to God. This is not some like weird prosperity preaching either. I'm saying like if God doesn't have a say in the way that you spend your money or in the way that you steward what he has blessed you with, he's not going to continue to give you more. He's not going to make money fall out of the sky to fix fix all these problems that you are the master of. Yeah. Right? Like that that would be an unfair way. That would that's how children 
um, become spoiled is when mom and dad just rush in and fix everything every time the kid makes a mess of it. Yep. Right? No, you have to live with those consequences, and that's what Israel's having to face here. And um, it, it stinks. A whole generation missed out on God's best. Um, yeah. Because they, because they were afraid. Because they listened to the wrong voices, which, I mean, how many times does that happen in our lives? We listen to the wrong voices. Now, they were the louder. They were the more dominant voices, as the worldly voices normally are compared yeah. to the godly voices, but because we listened to the wrong voices, they missed out. Yeah, crazy thing is like imagine being like on the on the cusp of that cutoff. Yeah. You're 19 years old, <laughs> and you have to walk around uh, the wilderness for 40 years, and then you don't get to see the promise until you're in, entering into this yeah. late stage of life. You know, because of what somebody else did. Yeah. Be furious. <laughs> yeah. I am. I ain't walking so, around. Yeah, here. If someone made me walk around the desert for forty years, I'd be furious. <laughs> <laughs> go walk with. Go walk with a, into a the land with them other camping people. Camping trip that would be my nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go on a forty-hour camping trip, let alone forty years. Yeah. Yep. No, I understand that. Alrighty. So obviously today, like we're all VBSed out on the stage and everything. Yeah. Uh, so I drew this ahead of time, completely at random. Um, but for the mystery meat question for this episode, what was your favorite TV show growing up? TV show growing up. Yep. Hmm. I had a bunch of them. Well, let's let's let's. Um, I mean, so no, everything no that was on artist. TGIF growing up. You remember TGIF? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. What was that like? Home Improvement. Yep. Um, Family Matters. Family Matters, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Was Full House on that one, too? I don't know if Full House was, but Full House was definitely one of my favorites. Boy Meets World is, like, way high. Oh, yeah, that's good. And then, like, the Nickelodeon shows, uh, Legends of the Hidden Temple. Dude, Double that's, Dare, yes. Rugrats, Doug. I feel like TV was just, like, so different grow like when we were growing up. It was awesome. Well, it's because they didn't have, like – all these insurance policies and stuff like that. Yeah. So, like, like you would just have mom and dad just sign off, hey, is it okay for your kid to come play this competition show? And so they would put them up and, Guts like. Guts was awesome. Was that the one that had the big aggro yeah, crag? Yeah, aggro crag. And yes. It was, uh, it was, like, a big old, like, obstacle course. Yeah. Oh, I love like the, yes, um, American Gladiators was fun. Well, that's what TV I'm saying. Like, like, like back awesome. back in the day, like they would just put these kids through the ringer. Yeah. They would be like, okay, and for our guest like defender, for you to not yeah. go up and 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 ring the bell, we've got Nitro making an appearance yeah. from American Gladiators, and there everybody's a, just like, oh, this is great television. There was a Nickelodeon show that was all video game based. That the kids got to get inside the video games. I remember that. I can't remember what it was called. That show was awesome. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah, TV growing up was awesome. It was. It wasn't all, like, animated or CGI'd out or well, anything. Well, that, plus it just wasn't always trying, like, it, it was just fun. Yeah, it was just good right? entertainment. Like, they, they weren't trying to, like, <laughs> teach us nothing. Like, they weren't trying to, like, make points constantly. It's like, yeah. that's what frustrates me. Not to get on a soap box just like <laughs> just like if i just watch it i'm not watching tv because i want to stimulate my brain that's the uh, like <laughs> that's not the purpose of tv okay i want to just check out so like don't message me yeah like in your show or movie about stuff like i just want to have fun yeah i just want to like oh my gosh look what doug funny and skeeter did like yeah that's so funny like that's all that i want in in tv and stuff and you all that other stuff there's a time and a place for it, but just, like, let me just enjoy yeah. television. Like, that's what it was as a kid. was, like, it was just fun. Yeah. Like, hey, we're going to dump green slime on you. Yeah. What for? No reason at all. You answered the question wrong. You get slime. It, it was awesome. We would always, because I'm one of one of four boys, and so it was all just only you and your sister. I don't know if you ever did anything like this, but uh, we would take the cushions from the uh, from the sofa and we would get like our nerf guns and set it up like mm -hmm. on that like the uh oh, what was it it was called assault that that game in oh, from america gladiators. And yeah. from american gladiators and we have like a piece of poster board with like a target on it 
And so we would have like a whole bunch of tennis balls and we're just like, there's, I'm sure we broke all kinds of, I mean, we did, I know we did. We broke all kinds of stuff like growing up. Yeah. I think, I think my mom said, uh, Indiana Jones when I was a kid, me and my sister at this time, we actually shared a room. We were really little. I saw Indiana Jones and, um, we had a, a, a closet door in our room. It was white, and I took a belt and was trying to Indiana Jones whip the uh, the handle. The handle <laughs> I was going over and over and over and over and over, and over thinking oh, it's no big deal. Yeah. I did not realize that every time I was doing that, I was peeling the paint off of the back of the door in our room. And yeah, I got in a lot of trouble for being Indiana Jones. Nice. Yeah. So I try. I definitely did try to act out certain shows and things like that. But that one was funny because it literally looked like someone had beaten the the daylights out of this door, like <laughs> just <laughs> whipping it. Yeah. I couldn't see the back side of it the way that I was trying to be Indiana Jones from around the corner. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it didn't. Uh, I got in trouble for that one. We had this old cassette uh, holder. It held like maybe 80 cassettes. And we were doing something in the living room one day. I think I'd like I think we were playing that stinking assault from American Gladiators. And my brother threw like a soccer ball at me and I knew it was gonna hit me, so I just ended up kicking it. And it went it curved and hit the wall and like it it brought the whole thing down. And so like I think every single cassette came out of the plastic holder. So I had to put them all back, and my brothers are laughing. Yeah. They're standing at the door. They're like, oh, they're back. They're back. You better hurry. You better hurry and do this. <laughs> I I think for the longest time, my dad would go, man, why is this cassette not in the <laughs> right in the right holder? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's like the greatest prank ever. Yeah. Oh, you better hurry up. Mom and Dad's home. <laughs> yeah. No, TV was awesome growing up. Yep, it was. It was. I wish we could go back to those simpler times, but it is what it is. We a, now we got jobs. Yeah, <laughs> I can't sit around and watch all prices right all day. Hey, we appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in to this television show. If you're watching it, if you're listening to it, uh, you'll probably appreciate our stage decor today. But, anyways, we'll see you next week for another episode of the Pastors Potluck. We'll catch you later. Thank you so much for listening in with us today. We really appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. You can also follow us on social media, on Facebook, Instagram. You can also watch the video version of this on YouTube as well. All you have to do is search up the Pastor's Potluck Podcast. From all of us here, we want to say thank you, and we'll see you next week.